we attempted to fix the Cooler Master H500P with generous usage of packing tape on the front of the case, and that was for two reasons. One, it no longer really comes off like it used to, so we've resolved that problem. And then two, as far as airflow goes, the actual reason for doing that was to create an extra maybe half inch to one inch spacing from the front of the chassis to the back of the front panel, which would resolve some of the issue of those front 200 millimeter fan cowlings bleeding into the mesh area for intake, where previously it was restricting airflow further than the case has already restricted by usage of its acrylic panels, obviously. Uh, in addition to that, we've got some testing for radiator placements. So we did radiator placement testing, we did cooler testing for different uh, fan configurations within the case, and then we have a special project coming up. Either It'll go up either before this video or just after. That should also interest you with this case. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB Closed Loop Liquid Cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus 3120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake Rain Fans at that. This is a 4.5 Gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So for the cooling problems with this case, a lot of it, well, really all of it, comes down to the fact that the front panel is closed off. We had some testing, we can put the chart up now from the initial review, where we showed that removing the front panel improved thermals in the CPU benchmarks by something like 10 to 13 degrees Celsius. And again, that's because you've got this massive 200 millimeter fan that is exposed to zero air. It's getting air only in through the sides. They're not particularly strong in static pressure to begin with. And then only a small percentage of the blade is actually ever exposed to the air anyway, because once the air goes in there, it's basically immediately being sucked into the case. It's not like there's just a bunch of, it, it doesn't have enough exposure to outside air, hence the improvement in thermals when we remove the panel. And part of this comes down to a general rule of thumb with air pressure. Speaking with some thermal engineers in the industry, we learned that generally speaking, you lose about 30% pressure for every 90 degree turn that you make. So not the best in terms of pressure and really not leveraging the actual 200 millimeter surface area of that fan to access air. So, uh, yeah, radiator testing will obviously perform better because you can pretty much resolve any thermal issue with water. It's not the best way to solve a problem. It's a brute force way to do it, but you can get the case in a better positioning relative only to itself with air. So compared to more open cases, this is still not going to be the best, obviously with liquid and a more breathable case, you're still gonna be better than liquid in this one, but we can get it to a point where it's reasonable. Now there are a couple of different radiator orientation options here, and this is a question that's really commonly asked. We've received it a lot for AskGN. Basically the question is, where is it best to put my radiator in my case? And the answer is, it depends entirely on your case and everything else. So this test applies only to this case. Keep that in mind. When we tell you that the radiator is best in a certain position in this case, don't run around saying, oh, the radiator is best in this position in every case, because that's probably not true. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is something new we're doing, radiator placement guides on a per case basis. We will probably only do it for the most popular cases. If you want to see more of them, tell us in the comments of the case reviews. But let's roll into this one for now. Starting with radiator placement testing and then moving on to the fan testing for airflow, we're using the new EVGA 240CLC as a stand-in for the top versus front mounting tests. This measures both GPU and CPU thermals throughout the process. Because the fans are such a major selling point for this case, we've tested a few different means of leveraging them, including relocation. The idea is to attempt to keep the original fans when possible, though we did run some modified tests for academic purposes where we got rid of the fans. The EVGA pump and fans were set to max RPM for these tests, as we're really just looking for consistency here, not optimal noise performance and the CPU voltage and frequency were also set to their usual fixed values. Although radiator position testing is really only comparable to this one case, some of the concepts will apply elsewhere, but the specificity will remain stuck to the H500P. Before getting to the first chart, here's a listing that defines our test configurations for radiator placement. The first is top mounted 240 millimeter cooler with the fans pushing from the inside of the case to the outside with both 200 millimeter fans and the original rear fan in their original positions. The next is front mounted 200 millimeter fans stock followed by the 240 millimeter radiator 
followed by the radiator fans in a pull configuration. So the fans are pulling air through the radiator with the 200 millimeter fans pushing air onto the radiator. And for the third configuration, we're looking at front mounted 200 millimeter fans with the radiator mounted internally on the inside of the case with a gap between the 200 millimeter fans and the radiator, as if you couldn't fit the radiator, for example, in the front fan bracket. The radiator fans are removed in this test using only the 200 millimeter fans for cooling the rad. The next test configuration is a front mounted 200 millimeter pair of fans with the radiator mounted between the chassis and the fans, so they are flush against one another with the radiator fans still removed. And the final test is a top mounted 200 millimeter pair of exhaust fans with a front radiator using the EVGA fans in a push configuration with those fans inset into the case rather than the original protruding layout. These tests are conducted with our thermal torture scenario, which places both the GPU and CPU under 100% power virus workloads. Here's a results chart. We found that the CPU thermals performed best when the radiator was positioned between the 200 millimeter fans and the stock EVGA fans configured in a push pull setup with 200 to 120s. This brought our CPU temperature to 45.8 Celsius delta T over ambient with liquid temperatures at about 14.7 C over ambient. The GPU, meanwhile, suffers a bit. We're up to 57C over ambient now, with an ambient of roughly 22 Celsius that put us as nearing 80C for the GPU diode temperature, not far from throttling. This is with the twin frozer coolers at the 55% fan speed, which is about where GPU coolers tend to max out their fan profiles. You could obviously drive this temperature down with a faster GPU fan RPM, but it may be better to just build things differently. Testing with the radiator flush against the 200 millimeter fans, but with the EVGA radiator fans removed, we end up with mediocre CPU and GPU thermals. The GPU isn't suffering as much for this one, but the CPU temperature has increased by about 13 degrees Celsius, with liquid temperature of about 7 degrees Celsius. The radiator fans were obviously doing a lot of work here, and getting rid of them means that we lose some of the static pressure advantage of smaller fans right up against the radiator. For the final front mounted configuration, the radiator had a gap between the 200 millimeter fans with no radiator fans mounted. We found this to be the worst configuration, pushing the CPU toward 67C over ambient or nearing 80C accounting for ambient, and that's about where an air cooler would put you. So obviously not a good idea. The GPU is still quite warm here as well. Running with the radiator in the front with EVGA's fans pushing and with the 200 millimeter fans moved into a top exhaust position, our numbers output as 59C over ambient for the GPU and 47C over ambient for the CPU. Although decent for CPU temperatures, the top exhaust fans are pulling the air away from everything else in the case, so we lose any dissipation potential we had over the GPU backplate or anywhere else on the GPU. It seems that the best configuration is to configure the 240 millimeter radiator in the top with the fans pushing up and out, and then to use the 200 millimeter fans in their stock front intake position. This results in a 51.8 degrees Celsius CPU temperature and 50.5 C GPU temperatures over ambient. That's ideal because our CPU and GPU numbers are now closer, reflecting a better balanced cooling design. Besides, we want our GPU as cool as possible. A CPU's performance won't change much from an extra 5 degrees Celsius of heat, but a GPU's boosting performance will. Moving on to air tests, we're switching back to our original Core Frozer cooler that was used in the review and using some slightly changed data analysis methods, so these numbers are not directly comparable to previous tests. With a stock configuration tested under our new method, we are measuring 64.5C over ambient for the CPU, with the GPU at 53.4C over ambient. Remounting the panel with a makeshift 0.5 inch spacer by way of tape allows the mesh to better align with the front 200mm fans, but doesn't help enough. We are still at about 63C over ambient on the CPU or 515 on the GPU. That's a drop of about 2 degrees for what is worth, but we can get a bigger drop by fixing CM's choked off front panel by either removing it or using inset fans. If you remember from the review, the 200mm fans protrude outward enough to kill half of the ventilation usefulness. We installed two NF-A14 fans and fixed them to the same decibel level as the 200mm fans. Obviously, this is not a perfect comparison because we're using different fans with different specs, but we're at least at the same noise level as the stock case fans were, and in terms of price, they're pretty expensive as well. So they're close in price and in noise level at this configuration. 
This ends up with way better cooling for the CPU that was worse on the GPU due to the positioning of the fan. You could do a bit better by moving it down more than we did, but you do lose some of that airflow over the entire GPU surface area, which the GPU actually benefits from. The CPU temperature falls to 59C from 64.5C, with the GPU temperature rising 7 degrees as a result of the more limited airflow over the cooler. In the least, the more directional airflow of a top 140 fan is outperforming the 200mm fans at the same RPM. So the primary takeaway from the radiator side is more or less what makes sense. Now we see a lot of people doing front mounted radiators on cases because technically yes, it's going to be better for your CPU thermals. But there's a lot more to a system than just CPU thermals and this case, the way it's laid out, there's not a really a good intake for air to get to the GPU if you mount your CPU cooler to the front because now that radiator is obviously radiating heat and the fans are pushing it straight onto the GPU. So it's not really getting cool air. Plus we found with cases that have power supply shrouds like this one, they tend to have significantly worse video card thermals than cases without them. And that's just because it's restricting your airflow and how much air the GPU actually has access to. The fans can actually utilize which particularly matters with a dual axial cooler like this one. So we would recommend, and this would apply to 240s and 280s, and 360s for that matter, for when they fit, we would recommend generally trying to keep your CPU cooler in the top as exhaust, because when it's under liquid anyway, it's probably not gonna be that hot, and as long as you're reasonably below TJ Maxx, you're not losing anything from the CPU, not anything tangible as a user anyway. What you will lose is if you have it front mounted and you increase the temperature of the GPU by five to 10 degrees Celsius, at which point you've got potentially more limited boosting headroom, which Pascal is extremely sensitive to that and AMD Vega is as well. And you also have potentially, if you resolve for boosting headroom, a louder GPU fan, and those are gonna be smaller fans that make more noise than the front the whatever's in the front or the top. So we would recommend top radiators. If you're doing something like a 120 or a 140, we didn't test that, but just speaking from experience, I would probably do a rear mounted CPU cooler because the heat coming out of the video card should more or less be taken care of by the 200 millimeter fan to the front. You're gonna disperse most of that. Alternatively, you could do a top mount for a 120 or 140, but at that point, honestly, just whatever looks better. Uh, but as far as, Airflow, try and get more cold air to the GPU. It's struggling the most. For using a, a, a tower cooler like this one, still gonna have problems with vertical GPUs, obviously, as we showed in the original testing, but uh, you're already decently well off with the stock configuration, except if you felt like doing a change, I suppose you can move these two fans up here as exhaust and then set something up in the front as intake that's more directional. Now, we did plot higher GPU temperatures in that one instance we tested, but you could get it positioned a bit lower and it would probably be fine. It's not really worth doing though because ultimately this case, the way it's built, is to show off those fans. That's the reason to buy this case. They're really expensive, most of the cost. So you probably don't wanna move those to the top. They don't look quite as good, but hopefully that gives you an idea, more of a radiator placement guide than anything else. The rest was just kind of out of academic interest. And we do have another content piece on this one, either out or coming out soon. Uh, so keep an eye on that. We're, we're gonna fix the case. That's the goal here. So thank you for watching. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. This is the GN Graph logo shirt. Definitely subscribe for more so you don't miss the next parts of this case. I'll see you all next time.